on level. Right? They run simultaneously. So back to the login script idea where I have 10,000 lines running one after the other in that order will spawn multiple threads and as long as you say they can run simultaneously, they will. If there are dependencies, then you just start indenting. Uh, and we can do that easily just by, you can see here, there we go. Uh, you know, you just right click, move right, move left, <laughs> move up, move down. You're telling the order that they can run. Right? So yeah, they're not saying that you couldn't get the same results in the end, but we think we're going to make it a nice, easy, intuitive interface for you to get there. Uh, also, performance-wise, um, one of our usual messages around user environment management is a consistent environment right? and a responsive environment. So again, you're coming from different delivery methods. I want the same interface that I see, the same settings, but I also want it fast. So the way I have this set up right now is just a very bare-boned uh, mandatory profile, and that's it. And so remember, so it's a you know, 512K, took the default users uh, into user.dat, and that was it. Right? So any settings that you see personalized now are captured by us as they get set, sent back to the database. Right? And I'll come back to that more in, on the personalization side. Um, one other thing I want to mention too, again, we have lots of actions and, and you know, you'll even see something called lockdown. So just because they're policies, they can configure the environment, make it easier, uh, but you also can control uh, what the users can see. Just want to mention a brief mention of another product we have uh, as part of our suite, uh, which is called Application Manager. And in general, what it's basically done is to control uh, execution of, of code you approve of. Uh, so it could be as simple as, uh, was it delivered to the machine by one of our approved uh, user accounts, which would be you know, system, administrator, trusted installer. If anyone else put the executable there, if I downloaded it off the internet or something and just copied it there, no one can execute it. So we're not necessarily saying you can run it, you can't, although we can, but even just saying whoever put the code there, we're going to evaluate it. If it's a trusted source, then it can run. Okay. So it is a separate product, but another feature where, uh, that's part of that is something we call... Um, and I, I, I was going to say, I like to keep calling it ANAC. What's it stand for again? Yeah. So it's access control. So you're probably familiar with this on the switch and, and firewall side where uh, someone plugs in, who are you, you know, are you okay to run and so forth, what ports can you access, can you get to a web server and, uh, from this location or not. You go out to our guest lobby, okay, now you have limited access, we're just getting you to the internet. We actually have that ability on a user and application level. So what you could set up, for example, is that uh, a contractor connects in, and so they RDP in and they now have a desktop. What do they have access to? And yeah, you can set up complicated switch rules and, and so forth to accommodate that, but we can just set up based on, oh, you're a contractor, you're in that group. We can set up and says, well, when you launch this application from this set of IP addresses, these are the IP addresses you can access and these are the ports. Uh, maybe you have a, your regular workers, right? When they're on the land, they can connect to everything. When they connect from Starbucks, oh, we're going to limit the ports. They can't get to their file shares and so forth, but we will let them get their email and things like that. So it is a separate product, but uh, that, does, that can kind of complete the user environment management as well. So. Um, so here we're talking about policy side. We have actions, which are the things you can do. And so we try to pre-build all those, and you might say, there's no way, I know your developers are very good. I know you're going to, you know, 80 now, going to have 120 soon. Uh, they're good, but they can't think of everything I'm going to think of. So we also have custom actions and custom conditions. So if you have some of those scripts that really can't be replaced, we have those types of actions uh, allowed as well. You know, so you'll have a uh, custom and execute. And so you can literally just put it, right now we have uh, VBScript and Perl. Uh, sorry, VBScript and JScript. Down the line, we're expecting to add Perl and, and PowerShell and things like that. But, uh, so if you can write a script, you can just inject that and that'll execute too. We also have, for all our actions, a run as tab, which isn't clicking. It just wants a name probably. There we go. Uh, so for every action that we have, you can specify under what control. So as the user, as system, uh, or some other specified account. I think that was most of the actions. I did want to mention, uh, since I do have a bit of an AppV background, uh, as well as Tim, 
Uh, so we do have some good app V integration as well. Uh, so when a virtual application launches, we do hook into it. Uh, so any of the process start uh, type tasks that we mentioned down below, those can also be run off of virtual applications. In fact, we do this for you know, streamed apps from Citrix as well, uh, so it's not strictly an AppV thing. Uh, we do have a specific AppV um, action, uh, which does a basically OSD replace. Uh, so the intent is that probably in a, in a streamed environment, it's probably not as, as important, but if you were deploying through MSIs, for example, once you've deployed those packages out, those OSDs are there, there's no easy way to update that OSD. You have to you know, open up the package again, edit the OSD, redeploy the whole application again. What we allow you to do basically is says, oh, here's a new OSD with customized settings based on um, you know, your particular situation, your context of the time, let's use this one. So one package can have um, a broader capabilities of targeting different groups of users. You still could use it in a streamed environment, although you could also just create your own new OSDs up there as well. Um, and then other AppV integration we're going to see is going to come for the personalization side. So hopefully I'm going to come back to Word and we're going to see that uh, my setting, I can finally close it and, and connect both. Questions on policy? So triggers, more than you would have available through regular you know, scripting and GPOs. Uh, conditions to make sure that the right targeted devices uh, or users are receiving those actions. Uh, and then um, uh, customizations as well. When, when you talked about the MSIs, are they... In the AppV context you're referring yeah, to? Yeah. Yeah. Where are they launched so that the uh, application is installed? Yeah, sorry. So the, the AppV piece was outside of us, meaning the delivery is outside of us, meaning that one method of delivering virtual applications is as an MSI. They execute it maybe through your distribution system, GPOs, and then it runs and loads. But the problem in de deploying that is, well, there was one specific OED sta OSD state. It's now hit your machine. I can't edit that easily because of this delivery method of MSIs. So we do provide this option of say, well, here's an easier way now to do that uh, without having to redeploy just to change something that is really you could do in an XML file. So part of the policy... Yes, Tim. Sure. Select uh, policy engine, lots of people, big database, scalability? Sure. So uh, now we've been focusing on what's called policy, not personalization. So policy is configured here in a file. It's an XML file. So we need to get that out to uh, each client or end device that's going to be using this. Uh, so you can do that either, we have a tool that will do it, you can do it through, you know, you can save it as an MSI and deploy it through uh, SSCM and, and any other radiant and so forth. Um, so now what happens is the clients start up and they start processing this, there's actually no database activity for the policy piece. It's just the XML file deployed to the client. Personalization, then, which we're going to see, is stored in the database. Uh, and then we do need that scalability. So it is a three-tier architecture, you know, I have a console, web fr um, front end basically. And if you, similar to AppV, and that's, it's pretty stateless, you know, it's a, it's a web application, everything's in the database. Uh, we do support replication. Uh, we have a white paper that tells you how to do that replication in, in our context and so forth. Um, so yeah, so you know, an individual server, we say is about 5,000 uh, or so users. Again, it depends on the server, but the ones we tested, <laughs> uh, about five to 7,000, but again, easily okay. load balance. User user? What's that? Uh, we say users usually, yeah, assuming they're not all quite hitting at once. And then easily load balanced, whether through you know, just regular load balancing or F5 and so forth. Yeah. Yes? So if you're distributing this XML file to each client, yep. is there an application or an agent on each desktop? Yes, there is, yep. Uh, so we actually have, uh, we have an enterprise mode and a standalone mode. So in enterprise mode, we usually have two agents. Uh, we have uh, what is called the, the CCA, which is the Client Communication Agent. And so that's where if you want to update the policy, right, so again, you can use our tool to do that. You update it on the console. The agents come back and pull and receive that. So it's basically they, how do we deliver and understand the instructions. And then we actually have an agent that will then basically as a, you know, a filter there, watches the task, the process happen. There's a trigger. I need to respond. So there will be an agent, uh, at least, usually at least one or two, plus the XML file has to get there.